Welcome back to Lincoln's Creations and Rentals. We're here in my kitchen today to go over uh, some of the things I've been working on. Uh, as you can see, my kitchen, my house is a mess. I've got paint supplies all over the place. So I've been spending the last couple of weekends basically uh, painting the house. And I'm not even halfway done yet. But along with painting the house, we've got some of this real nice wood trim here, as you can see. Uh, hasn't been painted over yet, and it's really quite nice. Um, goes along with the hardwood floors, the, the cabinets, but it's also a little more traditional than what I generally like. So I really wanted to, and I can even add to that, this, this room used to have a chair rail uh, right about here running around the room, which definitely made this room look dated. So this room was a, a little more of a yellow than this, this beige, this... Uh, the color is actually called Navajo White from Bear. Uh, it's one of my favorite colors that they have. But I was really trying to update the look of this house. And along with paint, uh, trying to find a, a paint that, that sort of plays off the wood without just looking tacky. Um, I like more modern colors. I like grays. I like blues uh, and stuff like that. But that don't, doesn't always work well with with the wood tones that I have in the trim. I'm not about to go paint all this beautiful trim white uh, just to get a clean, crisp, you know, looking looking house. My wife likes this more traditional look, so I'm gonna stick with that. With that in mind though, I, I've started updating the colors. Uh, I just did the kitchen uh, a weekend or two ago, and I'm about to do the family room right now, which is right next door here. The family room has been painted, but we are, doing the electrical now. So I am changing all of the light switches, all of the electrical outlets, and all the face plates. So I wanted to share with you guys sort of the tools that I use to do that, and, and maybe we'll even uh, do one of the sockets real quick just to show you how it's done. First thing you need to do, uh, which is why I can tell I have no lights on here, the power is off. Make sure the power is off. If you want to test things just in case, and honestly, for this house, I have at least, I don't know, six or eight switches. I have no clue what they go to in this house. Everything used to be marked, uh, except for a handful of switches. Not a clue what they go to. Um, so you can always shut the power off to your entire house, or uh, there are two things you can get. Uh, this is a little uh, outlet tester I picked up. I'll bring it up here. And it was part of a sort of a little electrical kit that I had. Um, but this will tell you whether or not it's wired properly and whether or not there's power to it. And, and this has come in handy because there's a, a handful of outlets that are on different uh, breakers uh, in the basement, fuses, whatever you've got in your house. Um, and I've almost electrocuted myself because I didn't stop to double check. I've got a handful of GFCI, those ground fault circuit interrupters throughout the house, usually the bathrooms in the kitchen here. Um, but I, I have a couple, I think, that run to uh, the outlets that are outside, uh, run to other outlets that are just in specific parts of the garage. So some of those are sort of on dedicated uh, lines down in the basement where my box is. And it's not necessarily marked for the room or the area that it might be in. So. Uh, I've gotten lucky and that has saved me a couple of times. I know there are also, if you're looking to figure out which breakers, which fuses go to which areas in your house and you don't necessarily have somebody to help you, uh, I know I've seen a lot of electricians use. Uh, it's very similar to this. It's very small. It plugs into outlets and it just has basically an alarm. Um, that way you can, you can plug it in a room Go into the basement wherever your box is and start flipping switches if you don't know what they go to. And when you hear the sound come on or off, you'd know that that switch relates to that room wherever that's located. So some things you're going to need to do this are your basics. A couple of screwdrivers, Phillips head and flathead. I use uh, just an old pair of needle nose pliers. I'm going to need those. I have this little, these little husky picks. These are great. Um, especially if, if everything's been installed, um, 
through the little wire inputs that they have on the back of these. This helps get them out cleanly. And one of the things I absolutely love that I have is this little wire stripper. They come from Harbor Freight. They're like $5. They're so easy. Um, they aren't the best, but for five bucks, uh, I've gotten quite a bit of use out of these. I've changed probably a hundred outlets and at least 50 or 60 switches. I've done at least two whole houses. Um, and it comes in handy when you just need a little more space um, to strip the wire. So those are the basic tools I'm using. Uh, we're gonna go in the family room now. I've got the power off and I've got the faceplate off of an outlet. We're gonna go in there and do a quick change of that one and I'll show you what, it, what it's like. Now, something that you should know is I bought the bottom of the barrel cheap outlets from Home Depot. Uh, they're like a buck a piece, uh, maybe even less. Um, one of the things I don't like about them is the, the quick connect holes in the back of these uh, sockets, these outlets do are not big enough for the wires that I have in the house, the gauge wires that I have in the house. So it might be worthwhile if you want this to go a lot faster to buy a slightly different, more expensive, uh, one of the more preferred uh, styles of outlets because it'll definitely make things a lot faster. So that's why I have my needle nose pliers. I need this just to turn and twist the wire so I can get it around all the screws, uh, which is definitely quite a bit more time consuming than just the quick connect shoving the wire uh, into the, the hole in the back and, and it holds it in there. It's nice and easy. And again, um, this is to get that wire that's, that's locked in that hole out. So we're gonna go over there now and check it out and we'll go from there. So I've got the power off, but I'm gonna double check by plugging this in. So I've got no lights on at all, either socket, so I am good to go. First thing you gotta do is take it off. This is what gets time consuming is all of the unscrewing and screwing of all the screws. And if you don't have a ratcheting screwdriver, which I should go find mine, um, it definitely gives a wear and tear on your wrist and arms as you're doing this. So. Oh, almost there. All right, so we have two black, two white, and the ground wire. The ground wire is usually the one I take off first, just because it's a little different than the other four. Uh, at least in this house, um, they've used those quick connects uh, for all the other screws, so or all the other wires, so. I'm just going to loosen this up and get this ground wire off and put that to the side. So behind here, we've got all four screws. I'm going to bring this a little closer so you guys can see. Sorry, not all four screws, all four wires here. They're all stuck in there. What I'm going to use is this little pick here and there's a little release back here. You can stick it into the release and the wire should come right out. You should be able to do this with all of them. They're not always perfectly easy. You gotta catch it at just the right angle. Of course it doesn't like me for this one. Alrighty. Well, this one has actually just started to fall apart so so we're gonna have to I won't be able to see if anybody can donate this to anybody because it's just falling apart so all four are out and for a regular outlet it's really not gonna matter where they're connected now outlets have these tiny little tabs on them right here, if you can see that, that connect the top from the bottom here. There's a little piece. Now, if you are using uh, some outlets, um, can be segregated so that 
the top or the bottom is on a switch and the other half of the outlet is just regular usage. So in those cases where you're having dedicated power go to one and then an on-off switch going to the other, you would generally break those tabs off. That way the switch doesn't relate to the entire thing, just one half. So like I said, these are real cheap. They have very, very small of uh, those quick connect holes and you cannot get the gauge wire that I have in those holes. Otherwise this would be so much simpler. So what I'm gonna do instead is grab my needle nose pliers and I am going to first straighten these out just a little. And I'm going to twist them into a little hook in the direction that the screw will be tightening in. So my black ones I'm going to keep on the right hand side. So I'm going to twist these, hook these up a little bit. I'll bring this back down again so you guys can see what I'm doing here. And then the white ones are on the left side. So I'm going to twist those down. All right, I have always started with the ground. So I'm gonna get my ground latched back in there underneath the green screw. That's gonna be your ground. And I'm gonna tighten that up. Make sure it's on there nice and tight. Some of these have little tabs that you can sort of just turn the outlet and it sort of folds the wire over for you. Alrighty, that leaves us with the rest of these. So I've got one line in and one line out here. For these basic ones, it doesn't matter. Uh, for the ground fault circuit interrupters, it's going to matter which one is carrying the load. So you're going to have your line in and then all your load behind that line. So basically every outlet or anything that's being powered on the load is also covered by the, the, the ground fault interrupter. So for this, it's just a matter of hooking these wires underneath the screws. And I think I'm gonna need to turn this one a little bit more. Just need to get them underneath and then tighten them up. I know it's sort of hard to see here. So all I'm doing is making sure this hooks underneath. I need to twist this a little bit the other direction. There it goes, sort of snaps into place, tighten these down. So I got the white ones on one side, and now we're going to do the blacks on the other. Move some of those wires out of the way a little, get a little closer here. So just get that looped underneath there. There it goes, snaps into place, sort of. And screw that one down. And the next one, same thing. Get it underneath there. Screw it down. Sort of holding it in place here. All right. Push all those wires back in. Make sure there isn't any significant uncovered wire back there. I know one of the things one of the things I've always done and struggled with is sometimes I have the, the ground wire accidentally touching something else and I'm running the, the breaker, uh, snapping the fuse, whatever you want to call it. So I always get frustrated with stuff like that. So that is essentially it for this one. I'm going to screw it back in 
you just sort of have to maneuver it with the since you've moved the wires around a little bit All right, so I got her started. Let's get her the rest of the way down. And top side. And it's in there fairly tight. You can always tighten it a little bit more before you put the faceplate on. If you're new to this, I highly recommend turning the power back on and testing this outlet specifically. Make sure you did it right. Um, when you test it and put this in the outlet, um, this one specifically, if it's done right, uh, the two orange ones, orange or yellow, will be lit. If something is done wrong, one of the red one will be lit. And if there is nothing at all, uh, nothing will light. So you can see here all the different sort of options there are um, as to what might be wrong with your outlet. So that's it for this. I mean, it didn't take me, I mean, even with the direction, we're, we're in and under 10 minutes here to do one. I actually have seven more to do in this room. Uh, so I'm going to get to that. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed. It's not overly difficult. I'm actually going to do this whole room at once and then turn the power back on, which I don't necessarily always recommend because then you never know if you did something wrong, necessarily which one you did wrong until you go check them all, uh, which I have had happen before. <laughs> so I also recommend at times, if you're new to doing this, don't put it, screw it all the way back in before you turn the power back on. That way you can take a look behind it to see if there's anything that's not going well. and at that point in time, if you do put it back into the wall and then turn the power on and something is wrong when everything was right the first time around, then you likely know that somewhere along the lines, uh, it's grounding out, which means one of the wires is touching something it shouldn't be. So it shouldn't be too hard to take a look behind them, open them up, move the wires around, and make sure you've got it right. So thanks for joining me here at Lincoln's Creations and Rentals on this quick and easy tutorial on how to change an outlet. And if you need more direction on the GFCIs, I may do those at a later time. And I may do some uh, light switches because there are standard single pole, which is just a toggle switch, one toggle switch for uh, one action. Or there is a three-way uh, where you put two three-way switches in to, uh, to create action on, on one, one area, one light, one, out, one outlet, whatever it would be. Or... Uh, four-way switches in which you'd use two three-ways and one four-ways and you would have three switches all together uh, to access one feature. So thanks for joining me here again. I'll see you guys shortly as I uh, come up with some other stuff to bring to you.